All right, chapter four, The Confession of Faith, part two. You know, back in chapter um, three, we just spoke about have the God kind of faith. Speak to your mountain. Words, your words are as powerful as God's words coming out. So you have that creative power. You have that life power in your tongue. That's it. When someone receives a compliment, the words of encouragement are so enriching and uplifting that they are a blessing to the recipient. I, I notice every time when I affirm or I say something to my kids, you can just see the, the joy, the pleasure that it brings them. We all appreciate positive words spoken of or about us. When we deal with children and youth, it's easy to see. But we also need it. As grown-ups, we also need to have that. Come on. You know, there are the different love languages, but that doesn't mean that if your love language is an affirmation that we don't need to affirm people. That's it. You know, we're to prefer one another above ourselves and to see each other as Christ sees um, us. Many marriages break down because words of love are neglected, and a marriage becomes a platform. He's looking at me. I'm preferring her right now. I see that. I saw you out of the corner (laughs) of my eye. (laughs) That is why husbands and wives should constantly seek ways to encourage and bless one another. On the other hand, negative words can curse and destroy. Again, the Bible says there's power of life and death in the tongue. That's it. You have to watch. You know, I've had to repent sometimes when I say things over my kids. Your your tongue can be just of a destructive force as it can be something else. As it and it, can it, was de- it was designed by God. The original intention of that tongue was designed by God to be a releaser and creator of life. Obviously, the enemy came and perverted that when sin came into the world. Uh, so we can. your tongue is a creative force. Um, and we shouldn't use it to be a destructive force. You know, even in, you know, I, I had a situation recently where I was speaking to someone, and the words that they were speaking over someone, someone else was not life. It was death. Careful what you speak about circumstances and situations and how you speak about people. Make sure that they line up with God's word. See them as Christ sees them. Come on. You know, speak, you know, it's, it's very simple. It's just like we've always taught since we were children. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. If the words out of your mouth is not something that you would want said about you, then you shouldn't be saying about anyone else. That's it. If That's the words it. out of your mouth couldn't be said to the person that you're speaking about, you shouldn't be saying it at all. Yeah, I think that's a good way to evaluate. If I'm going to talk about him to you. It's a good way to evaluate. Uh, You know, if what I'm about to say, I wouldn't say about myself, then should I be saying it? You know, of course, there's room in situations when we're dealing with a problem. Um, I'm talking about uh, when when we take it to the next extreme. Sometimes it's bring, hold your, don't do anything out of emotion, you know, and speak. Don't release things into the atmosphere. It's power in your words. Well, it says in Proverbs 10, 11, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. I don't know about you, but I want my mouth to be a well of life. I mm-hmm. woke up this morning, you know, and I always evaluate, you know, he'll tell you, you know, he'll hear me whether I'm in the shower or, you know, I'm kind of mumbling to myself, Lord, how could I have done that differently? What could I have done better? And I woke up this morning evaluating some things and I said, Lord, I thank you that I'm quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. And, you know, I've heard the phrase, well, they provoked me to anger. You have a choice. I have a choice. I have a choice. It doesn't matter what you're triggered. You have a choice. No one controls you. You control yourself. And so I have to tell myself that I have self-control because the Holy Spirit lives within me. Those are fruits that have to grow. doesn't mean I always operate in it. But it's a fruit that's growing. If I say I love my kids and I'm saying, oh, I'm losing my patience. What does the Bible say? Love is patient. So am I really loving them if I'm operating in impatience? And again, there's no condemnation. I'm trying to give you a practical life lesson that I and my every day have to deal with. And I'm speaking the affirmation of God. I'm going to be quick to listen today, slow to speak and slow to anger. I'm putting that at the forefront of my mouth, mine, because I want my mouth to be a well of life. This, Violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Go ahead. Where are you? I missed you there. Violence. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I read your highlighted part. All right. No, that's sorry. fine. So there is more to words than just saying them. Words are an extension of the inner condition of our hearts. 
Um, we know you. We know where you are by what you say. You, you know, uh, <laughs> out of the abundance of the heart, what you speak about, how you speak, what you do, when you speak, your words are an indication of where you are. The spirit world is controlled by the word of God in yes, our mouths. Amen. Everything is controlled by the word of God in our mouths. So. Um, you know, there's power, there's power, there's power, there's power. You've got to, you know, we can say this enough. And I think this is a very neglected, um, so neglected in the body of Christ because of the extremes that men, that some have taken it into. So, you know, you can't, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is a baby here. It's real. It's full of revelation. It's life transforming. And it, it doesn't um, surprise me that the enemy would come against you operating in the realm of speaking the word of God, because the last thing he wants is for you to grow in faith, develop your faith and be as one who proclaims and decrees. And by the way, confession, de declaration, prophesying, decreeing, that's all the same thing under the banner. You put whatever, decreeing, uh, uh, confessions, decrees. It's all under the same banner here. Well, the here. Bible says, decree a thing and it shall be established. Right. So what are you decreeing? Right. You know, it says here, in, in, in guise of that, by blessing of the upright, the city is exalted, but it's overthrown by the mouth of the wicked, Proverbs 11, 11. And on a side note, uh, we, we know we spoke about in the last one, if you do your Bible reading for the year, or let's say you want to go through Proverbs, that's a great place to start. There's a chapter for every day if there's 31 days in there. Um, Proverbs have our wealth of wisdom and information. The positive, faith-filled words we speak over our city can influence this entire destiny. We should find the good in the city and speak over it. There will always be problems, but these will become fewer and fewer as we apply words of life. As believers, we have the ability to change the spiritual atmosphere of our cities by blessing them rather than cursing them. We would then start to see spiritual hunger increase among people. That's what we should do for our city, for our nation. You know, pray. Pray for those that persecute you. Pray for those um, in office. You don't have to agree with their policies, but pray for their salvation. Jesus still died for them. Amen. So we need to pray for our leaders. Pray that their hearts are turned to God. Proverbs 18, 21. We've quoted this many times during this time. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What fruit are you eating? How many of you, if I handed you an apple full of rotten worms, would want to eat it? I think none of you. So why then are we so quick to the tongue with cursing? You know, now I'm not talking about curse words swearing, but negative talk, negative thinking. You know, that you've heard the phrase, stop your stinking thinking. A negative word is, you know, negativity isn't, you know, obviously there is like the utmost negative, but negative speaking is anything that contradicts the word of God. Correct. Anything that contradicts bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Christ is the word that was made manifest. Anything that contradicts the revelation of who Jesus is and what he has spoken, the things that we say, those things are negative. I am, um, you know, on the next page, it says Proverbs 6, 2, you are snared by the words of your mouth. That's it. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Think of a snare, a trap. You're trapped. Um, I would love if, if you have the opportunity, it's a quick 30 minutes. Uh, Apostle Jane Hammond, who we had at the church, has a powerful teaching on her new YouTube channel. She's posted on her Facebook page. I posted on my Facebook page. It's the power of your words. And she even gave an example. One time she and Tom were in the airport and it's not like her to normally, you know, subscribe to any negative talk or thinking. But something came across to them, and, and she gives this, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, she gives this example in her 30 minutes, but she was saying how she immediately lined up with the negative, and Tom even looked at her like, what are you doing? And she was like, what am I doing? And she kind of almost smacked her face, and, you know, he'll do that to me. Sometimes I'll get frustrated with people or things and, and um, stuff that comes up on a daily basis, and I'll, I'll be frustrated, and I'll start venting, and he'll say, watch what you confess. Yeah, yeah. Watch what you say. So, Again, be careful, little mouth, what you say. You're, you are snared. You are trapped by your words. So be if careful, you, can't, be, you say it best when you say nothing at all. How many of you just saying that? Sometimes you have to say nothing 
at all. That's that's the uh, my favorite song. There's actually a a, a ballad, slow song written. It's a secular song. It says, "You say it best when you say nothing at all." Um, negative words. Let's take a look at that. The negative words reveal a negative life. Come on, negative words re- reveal a negative life. Making a negative confession, speaking words of defeat, failure, or the supremacy of Satan. Do you know when we speak negatively about our circumstances? It, while we might not deliberately, we are actually making a declaration of the supremacy of Satan. So we're saying Satan is more prevalent in my life than what the Word of God says about mm. me. Uh, so it actually provides a glimpse of the condition of our hearts. No one can rise above or his or her words. You cannot rise above your words. Come on, guys. That is such a powerful statement. If your language is that of defeat, fear, failure, anxiety, sickness, rest assured. In other words, without any doubt and without wavering, rest assured, your life will be lived at that level. That's exactly what you're going to experience. Well, you can tell a lot about a person in the first five minutes by what they speak. I had had lunch with someone recently, and they were telling me about their experience with someone else. and we were we were talking about her personal stuff, how she's just so positive. And someone had asked her, why are you always, you know, so smiley? Or what do you have? And she said, and she, she was clearly going through some things. But she said, I have so much to be thankful for. And she kind of brought some soft correction to that person. You, you, you basically, you're snared by your words. You don't have to walk around so glum and gruff and with a chip on your shoulder and... You know, they, she, she's going to choose, you know, there's, there's a song, I choose this day to be thankful. Amen. There's so much to be thankful for. Your words reveal the state of your heart regarding your family, your church, others. Your words paint a public picture of your inner self. Remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A wrong confession is a confession of defeat, failure. And again, we talk about the supremacy of Satan. You have to line yourself up with the truth of God's word. This isn't a religious condemning statement, but if you find yourself going to the negative more, you are, the enemy is under your feet. Well, yeah, it says, yeah. But so many times we give him the authority just by the words of our mouths. Well, that's what it says, yeah. It says, if you talk about your combat with the devil, all right, how he hindered you, what a hard time he's giving you and how he's keeping you in bondage, you are glorifying your adversary, it is an unconscious de- unconscious declaration that Father God has failed you. Oh, guys, I mean, that's pretty serious. Think about it. So uh, you will have what you say. And the more you speak about the devil, I mean, I meet people all the time. The first thing, how are you doing? Well, man, the devil's really been attacking me. And most of the time I meet with him, the devil's really been attacking me. Well, guess what? That's all you speak about, it, about how the devil is attacking you. You're going to completely live a life where you are completely being attacked by the devil. So Satan has supremacy in their lives versus the authority of they are saved. But yet they are living a life where Satan reigns more supremely and is governing their circumstances than what the word is. That is so powerful. Amen. And I know I can almost hear some people saying, well, that's so fake. You know, and I I remember um, years ago. I was so irritated because, and the Lord was was dealing with me, and I was like, well, I'm not going to say I'm fine if I'm not okay, because that's a lie, and that's not, you know, as Christians, we shouldn't lie, and I'm being fake and a hypocrite, and, and the Lord said, but I didn't, I called you to die to yourself. We're to come up higher and to live according to the Spirit, not according to your flesh. And it was a soft rebuke, but it made me realize that it was like, my feelings and emotions might not be in the right place. Well, then maybe it's just best for me not to speak. Maybe you're dealing with emotions, you're dealing with struggles and problems, and you need someone to help you. Well, then find somebody trustworthy. You can't trust everybody. Find somebody trustworthy that you can speak to to help speak that life back into you. But you'll know, you'll find the negative Nellies everywhere you go. They just carry it. They, you know, if, if you can't say something good, say rather don't don't let anything out of your mouth until you get your emotions under control and then speak life. Well, and I love what Jane says in her message, too, because she she said, you know, sometimes um, 
the enemy can attack you because you're doing good. Keep doing good. Keep pushing forward. Other, but people, Don't make that the focus now. Right, exactly. But that's the point. Like, that's it. You'll hear somebody, oh, well, if everything's going great, then you must not be doing something right. That is rubbish. That is a that is actually, wicked lie. That, like, that's not what the Bible says. We go from glory to glory, and it says he'll be with you in the mountains and the valleys. He leads you beside still waters. He restores your soul. You, the enemy, the enemy comes like a lion seeking, uh, like a like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He comes to rob, we, steal, kill, and destroy. We we're, uh, you know that. So on the one side, where where she just said that. So if you're all you're doing is everything is just great and everything's just wonderful, that means you're not doing anything, and uh, the devil doesn't even need to hinder you clearly because, uh, you know, you're doing everything right. Uh, that part. And then there's the other aspect of we understand that the enemy comes against us. The problem is, is that if you have mountain moving faith in your walk with your Lord, because you understand your authority over him, then his attacks don't take you in and out of your joy. You are not governed by that because you know who you are. You speak the word of God. So when he does try to come, you recognize his attack, but you don't make him the focus. He is a creation, and you serve the God who is the creator, and he's given you Jesus. And he's given you the and authority. And his perfect authority to take authority over him you by know, speaking it. We teach this even in kids' church to the four- to six-year-olds. Yes, I said four- to six-year-olds. Remember, they're not just kids. They're Holy Ghost, power-filled, spirit-filled children of the king. And if we can teach us the kids how much more adults should get this— I give them keys, and they have them acted out. Adam and Eve sinned. They gave the keys to Satan. Jesus died. He took the keys back from Satan and gave them back to Adam. Gave them, you are that second, Jesus became that second Adam and restored to mankind what was taken from them. Right. He's given you back the authority. The enemy is under his feet. But so many times. We walk around we like use, he still holds the keys. Yes, and will we give him the keys? Just by our words, we hand him back the keys. Yeah, which is un uh, Satan's indirectly. Satan's got my we've back again. Indirectly. The enemy is attacking me. Indirectly, Ooh. we we think he's, you, you act like he still has the keys. We act like he, and we put the keys. Meanwhile, the keys are on your table for you to pick up. And uh, the enemy knows when you have the keys on your table and you never use them. It says, boldly affirm God's care, protection, and provision for every area of your life, proclaiming that the greater one Jesus lives in you. In doing so, you will rise above all satanic influence. So it doesn't mean that you just deny everything that comes to you. You know, he asked he asked me something this morning. I had some ache or pain, and I said, you know, I'm having symptoms of this, but this is what God's Word says. I'm dealing with this, but this is what His Word says. Amen. I stand Amen. on His Word. I affirm with His Word. Amen. It doesn't mean that you, you walk around like nothing, you know, nothing is happening. But those things, the Bible says the violent take it by force. Amen. The violent take it by force. It doesn't mean that you're oh, oh, tearing down strongholds. That's what people think, that they're waving their flag and, and, and blowing things in the, in the spirit to clear. No, it means you take the, the word of God to your situation. And like a bulldog tenacity, you're going to stand firm in his word and tear down those strongholds in your mind and apply that word that's that cell. That's that healing balm of Gilead. You're going to apply the word of God to your situation. Amen. So here it says, believe and declare God's word. Go to a higher level in the kingdom of God. Believe you are who God says you are. Think that way. Act that way. Train yourself to live in that way. This is something that you have to consciously make the decision of. It's not going to, you're not going to wake up. And suddenly in robotic mode, be this way. This is something left for you to yes. develop as a believer. Romans 12, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of Christ, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Uh, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be but uh, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of the mind is in the meditation, putting in, and being intentional about what you're putting in because guess what what you put in is going to come out and you're going to begin to be you're going to begin to think that way you're going to be to act that way train yourself to be in well, that way well and the fact is you might like have been way. told all your life you might have been rejected you might have been told you were scum you were this you were that 
But the truth of God's word is that you are a child of the king. You are seated with him in heavenly places. You are the apple of his eye. You have to speak what he says about you. That's pulling down those strongholds that are in the mind, casting down every argument that exceeds itself against the knowledge of God. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. Amen. You have to master that. And that's where the next part says, don't contradict God's word. But, but before you say that, the one statement here oh, that yeah. I highlight, just above where it says, don't contradict God's word, it says, you may not master the secret of positive confession of God's word in one day or even one week, but you will learn how to apply it as you continue to walk in it faithfully. So people often say, well, that never works. No, that's because we are not disciplined to continue to develop our lives in this way so that we can begin to see the results. You know, it's the same thing in the natural. If you cut out processed sugar, and I'm not I'm not a dietitian. Let me disclaimer. Please this don't talk a, about this because I had a fine fun, print. I had too many cookies last night. So this, you might need to hear this. All right, then I'll listen. This is him confessing his sins to his brethren. But here, here is the truth of the matter: is if you cut out processed sugar, and they, they were you, delicious cookies. You they were eat delicious. greens, and you eat protein. <laughs> you'll probably and you move your body a little bit. Now again, disclaimer: I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on this. This is an example. You will probably lose weight. It might be two pounds a week, but you'll slowly, steadily start to do it. Amen. You start to lift weights. You will slowly, steadily start to build Amen, muscle. Amen, I think. As you think in your heart. I'm sorry. I'm just messing so with you, you still. So you will be. So out of the same mouth, don't proceed blessing and curses. My brother, these things ought not to be. You know, don't speak out of both sides of your mouth. You can't have fresh water. How many of you, if I gave you, if you were like, I'm so thirsty, and I'd spit in your water. Would you drink it? You're, some of you just went, that's so disgusting. Absolutely, you wouldn't because it's tainted. The same thing with our mouth. Blessing and cursing should not come out of our mouths. Our mouths should be wells of life is what the Bible says. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. That's me speaking out of both sides of my mouth. That's just idle. That's oh, idle sorry. talk, the well, next part. But I said positive things while I was I thought you were trying talking. to be a ventriloquist. Yeah, okay, no, no. But some of us are like ventriloquists. We we say one thing and then say another thing, and it's it's canceling out the Word of God in our lives. Some people spend time in idle talk. We ought to ensure that our conversation is edifying and productive to the spiritual wholeness of our lives. And then you just go through these scriptures. Yeah, we're, we're highlighting things. So we, you know, you're listening to us, but certainly read every bit of what's here. You know, um, it says in Proverbs thirteen three, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens his lips wide shall have destruction. You can learn a lot again by listening. In the first five minutes, what people say, and also how many of us go through when we talk to somebody, we just can't wait to have, say what we have to say. You get more out of listening, being quick to listen. I love what he says down here. Very last thing on that page, it says, are you leaving a house? Like when you're praying for somebody, the sick person's wife says, keep praying for him. This statement indicates her lack of faith, God's word, which clearly states that the sick will recover. Instead of giving glory to God's power and faithfulness, she may even go on to give glory to the enemy by saying, as soon as you leave, the devil is sure to give him a severe test and will do this to the best to steal his health. There, the neg she just had her negative confession. Instead, confess confidence in well, God's word. Well, basically, look, uh, you know, so you can pray for somebody, but then their words nullify every bit of that prayer of faith. So that's where we've got to come up. We've got to line up with, the, well, I've tried that before. And it doesn't matter whether you see the results or not. We have to depend on the truth. Did Were, were we healed by the stripes of Jesus? Yes or no? Yes, we were. Everything was put upon his body. You know, I'm not going to be the one to sit here and give you every answer to every question on why every single person isn't healed. There's 101 different reasons for that. I don't understand every single answer to that. It's going to take eternity to understand God. But the fact of the matter is he is the healer. And just because you don't see a result right away doesn't mean you stop. And that's where the battle, that's where defeat comes in is because we give up too quickly. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you feel. It only matters what the word says. And that is ultimate truth. And again, it's not about being robotic, right. you know, it's, right. it's about 
Yes, you are human. Yes, you are flesh. But as believers, I truly believe when you know who you are and whose you are in Christ and you stand on the foundation of his word, his truth, you let that Bible be the blueprint of your life. You let his word continue meditating on it. You People will notice. They'll notice, well, there's a difference about you. When you start to believe, I saw it happen to a person recently, the transformation of the word of God, when they started to believe the word of God, it was like night and day. Amen. Because they believed what his word said. They stood on what his word said. Uh, Thank God and confess his word. A person with a broken hand does not say, my hand is not broken. My hand is not broken. So again, it's not... That's not it. That's not how it works. And this is where people have given the subject a bad name here. Continue with that. Continue reading That is neither a faithful confession or a positive confession, but rather it's foolishness. That's foolishness. It's foolishness like this, like this, that's discredited faith teaching. The here, now here's the correct. So what do you do? Here's the correct. Lord, I thank you that you restore my hand to full use and movement and that the bone is knitted together speedily and all pain goes in jesus name in jesus name. come on are you that's great exactly it's not denying the reality of the problem but denying the problem to have a permanent hold on your life exactly the the, the um we take it by force a- amen the violent it's denying, take it by force. it's denying the problem from having a scripture. permanent hold on your life positive confession recognize that the problem is real but that the word of god is able to solve it yes. and sometimes it can be immediate jesus uh jesus said there were there were pro, there were immediate miracles in the ministry of jesus there were progressive miracles in the ministry of jesus even in the realm of healing jesus healed people immediately yes. some he rubbed and they said well i see men as trees then he rubbed them again i mean the miracle never happened he did it twice so sometimes we've got to be persistent amen jesus's faith was so strong i mean at the very worst case scenario he paid prayed for somebody twice we're still developing our faith and if jesus could do it twice then we've got to carry on doing it until we get the result and, come on and I, I think i gave this example the last time in the audrey mack uh teaching where god told her to tell the woman it's going to be an inward work and then outward and she had to get that word inside of her to possess the healing that was already paid for. It wasn't that, oh, you know, like I heard somebody say once, well, I'm fasting to see my spouse healed. So you're telling me that the work that Jesus did on the cross wasn't good enough, that God needed you to fast, to beg him, to somehow manipulate him to do the work that was already completed. Now, should you fast? Absolutely. But fasting, what that does is it gets out the unbelief that's in your heart to stand in faith. Amen. It's not to manipulate God. Well, I fasted and I saw this move. Well, really what happened was you fasted and then your flesh was weakened. So your spirit could hear and believe what the word of God said about you. Right. And so in that situation with Audrey Mack, the woman had to stand in God's word to know who she was. She had been beaten down, battered, the words uh, physically and, and mentally. And um, she had to discover who she was in Christ. And as she did, bit by bit, bone by bone, speaking to yeah. those bones, uh, she began to come to life again. Truth is more important than f- truth pr- trumps facts. I'll say that truth trumps facts. It's not even here right now, but truth trumps because facts can change. Truth remains truth. Yes. And the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. So your, your righteousness, your peace, your joy is the enemy's out seeking whom he may devour. He's going to try and come. I'm not saying that you're sitting there looking for the devil around every corner, but he doesn't like you. Amen. And so you have to stand alert, stand strong, stand steadfast, stand doing everything done, stand on his word and take it by force. It's yours. It's yours for the you know, taking. I, I'm, I'm going to just quickly, and we're going to uh, come to the finish line right now. But, you know, Dr. Leon, in this pr- paragraph says, confessing negatively is like signing for a package that the express company has delivered. Satan has the receipt and wants your signature by your confession. It's like, you know, you have an Amazon package coming to your door. You open the door. There's the package. You've accepted the package. When come the on. enemy comes in, uh, you can notice there is something that he's trying to, something is there trying to appeal. Now, you have, you do not have to accept the package. 
even though everything's in front of you. Don't sign off of it and Re take the package. Return to sender. Return to sender, all right? Then it says, be followers of God as dear children. The word follower means to imitate, yes. all right? It should be an imitator. We are to imitate God as a child does his father. Jesus said, I do and say what the father does and says. If we are to be imitators of, of God and Jesus, Jesus, the, Jesus spoke and saw miracles, we are to speak. Yes. The Father spoke creation into existence, we are to speak. Call those things which are not as if they already are. Amen. Let's continue. Speak God's word, not like a parrot. Come on, it's not about learning things parrot fashion, but with understanding and revelation. Speak to your mountain and do not speak about it. Speak to your mountain. If you speak, uh, you know, you've heard this is so cliche, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. If you speak about the mountain, it will grow. But if you speak the mountain to the mountain, it will go. So Jesus in answer yes. said, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you will receive them and you will have them. So speak the truth. Amen. Everything that is not of God's word is a lie. Amen. Bottom line, it, it is black and white. God's word is truth. If it's not God's word, it's not true. It's a lie. Jesus never spoke negatively. He never prayed about a problem, and he never spoke in doubt. He was always accurate, never crooked in speech. He never confessed present circumstances, but the desired results. So we need to imitate him in our speech. Let the confession of our lips bring health and prosperity to every part of our lives and everyone around us. Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord God, to be encouraged in your word, Lord God. We are encouraged. We are strengthened, Lord God. And Father God, I pray that each and yes, every person Jesus. on this call tonight Whoever, whenever they are watching, Lord God, we'd be stirred that they would stir themselves up in the most holy faith, Lord God, to watch the words that come out of their mouth, to speak words of life, that their mouths would be wells of wells, Lord God, wells of living water, Lord God, not of cursing, Lord God. Stir in them to speak your word. Stir in them to hunger after your word. Stir in them to meditate on your word day and night, Lord God. And we thank you for the testimonies of your goodness that are produced from your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all honor and glory. Thank in you, Jesus. Jesus name. Also for your redeeming blood yes. that has redeemed me, even if I've, even though I've confessed that I ate those very delicious Nutella cookies. Son, Thank you. Forgiven. The Lord, is that the word, of the, the Lord? Lord, the word of the Lord? The Lord said, I'm forgiven. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Go and sin no more. <laughs> Go and sin no, no more. more. No more cookies. All right. We All right. Love, love you. you guys. God bless. Bye bye.